good evening. I was tasked here to discuss what's next for Brooklyn, but since I deal in the fantastical and the historical, I will speculate about Brooklyn's future by divulging its mythical past. You may call me grave robber, collector of bones, historical raconteur. I've dedicated my life to shining light on death, walking in its shadow, and gathering its thoughts and recollections for later use. I dredge up the past in order to remind, recall, and reveal. Sometimes I even use my creative license to revision. You say family, and I immediately think ancestors. Less concerned with what is or what could be, I am forever gazing over my shoulder, haunted. I confess, ghosts fascinate me. While my stories are entrenched in the past, they are powered by truth, specifically those details buried beneath centuries of lies, those whitewashed facts and bitter realities that have been honeyed and watered down for easy consumption, Kool-Aid. I was born in Brooklyn in the latter days of September, ruled by Venus and the ever-balancing scales of justice, taught to read and write at the tender age of four, I became instantly enchanted with both. My love of the bygone soon followed, and when I turned nine, I announced to my mother that I was going to become a writer. This declaration might not have come to pass had I not fallen in love with books, become obsessed with writing my own, or developed a curiosity for the overlooked, extinct, and forgotten. Had I been born to another set of parents, in some other borough, I don't believe I would be here addressing you this evening. But as luck would have it, I was born in Brooklyn, home to Plymouth Church, a place once dubbed the Grand Central Depot of the Underground Railroad. I grew up in Crown Heights, a jewel of a neighborhood teeming with immigrants from all corners of the globe. My family and I lived on Sullivan Place, just six short blocks from where the whack of Jackie Robinson's bat once echoed over the walls of Ebbetsfield Stadium. Three blocks south, where my siblings and I once delighted in games of hot peas and butter, double dutch and freeze tag, stands Medgar Evers College, named after the great civil rights leader from Mississippi. Two blocks east of that institution is my grade school, PS 161, the very same school Pulitzer Prize winning author Norman Mailer and music mogul Clive Davis attended as children. Not far from PS 161, on Dean Street, between Albany and Troy Avenues, once stood a handsome three-story brick building that was home to the Howard Colored Orphan Asylum. For a few months in 1906, that asylum was haven to Ota Benga, a Congolese man, a pygmy who had, for some time, been placed on display in the monkey house at the Bronx Zoo. Walk west from that point and you will stumble upon Weeksville, now the Weeksville Heritage Center, the guardian of what re remains of a neighborhood founded by newly freed African Americans. From 2001 into 2012, I owned, resided in, and wrote 10 novels in a beautiful 1896 brownstone at 534 Decatur Street in Bedford-Stuyvesant. The first owner of that home was William F. Fomer, a visionary who invented the Graflex camera right under that very roof. Less than a decade later, Bedford-Stuyvesant would see yet another creation. Morris Mitchum, a Russian Jewish immigrant, moved by a cartoon depicting President Teddy Roosevelt having compassion for a bear at the end of a hunting trip, stayed up all night constructing a plush toy that he named the teddy bear. <coughs> While graveyards may not be high on your to-visit list, it floats at the very top of mine. East of Bedford-Stuyvesant, straddling the Brooklyn-Queens border, sprawls the Cypress Hill National Cemetery, a vast city of the dead well known for its prominent residents, such as abolitionist James McCune Smith, who was the first African American to obtain a medical degree in the United States. Charlotte Ray, the first female African American lawyer in the nation. Musician and composer, UB Blake. Historian and activist, Arturo Schomburg. And Harlem Renaissance novelist, Nella Larson. My paternal great-grandparents, Aubrey and Ethel Gill, are buried there as well. 
like so many others before them and since. They left their tropical island home of Barbados and came to America to forge a better life for themselves and their offspring. So in my book, they are rock stars. Brooklyn, frontier, haven, muse, final resting place, historical register. Before Brooklyn was known for its beer and kombucha, <laughs> before it became posh to live here, the epicenter of culture, the envy of the world, home to celebrities and literati. It was Manhattan's unsophisticated sister, or that borough across the bridge that most had little knowledge of and few wanted to visit. Brooklyn, my home, my hood, the birthplace of Biggie Smalls, Barbara Streisand, Jay-Z, Woody Allen, Rita Hayworth, Akashic Books, Spike Lee, and me. Magical Brooklyn where the impossible is made possible, dreams are realized, and wishes do come true. In her classic novel, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, Betty Smith wrote, Brooklyn was a dream. All things that happened there just couldn't happen. It was all dream stuff. Thank you.